Ladies and gents, this letter is about to change when it goes through the, uh, the next set of hands before it meets it to the court. So I wanted to put this out there so that people could understand where my mind is at and precisely what I feel about the court's treatment of me. So without further ado, this is my letter of reaffirmation as an American citizen on legal status of non-felony misdemeanor compliant. Here goes nothing. To whom it may concern, this draft is in response to questions to why I should have need or want for expungement of criminal record and or termination of probation early. In my experience, both mine and that of friends, if a man has a record, criminal, he may never find employment. Furthermore, I am a constitutionally obligant public servant, devout in my militial duties. As such, Felony record in my history directly infringes upon my ability, right, and responsibility as an American citizen. To be forward, such an action would allow the Constitution to be upheld as legitimately proper, this action being the expungement and annulment of the record. To not take such action lays precedence for illegal and anti-constitutional efforts by state and federal government bodies, contra to my oath of liberty. If anybody wants to know what that oath is, it's fairly simple. Go and check out the MSOP. For truth's sake and justice reason, the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness must not be impeded nor hindered by such post happenstance. The measure of a man is not in his history, but his interests for future and his will towards others. My intent for the future, blame price, is wholesomely benevolent I want nothing more than to live without harassment and to be helpful to others where I can be. I do not deny that in his defense, a man becomes easily mistaken for animalistic mentalitized mayhem and that is governed via natural law, which means that no matter what you do, you cannot deny that ability nor that necessity. When it arises, it will happen. You will try to survive. I don't care who you are or how you do it. You will try to survive. As any West Point graduate could tell you, and yes, I know there are several West Point graduates in the audience, okay? To protect yourself, you must defeat any enemy. Therefore, your best defense is the appropriate offense. As it stands, I am too old to be beaten, but too young to die. Due to my record, I cannot convince prospective employers to even entertain the notion of extending employment to me. This too has a perpetual drain on personal confidence. It is mentally, emotionally, and physically draining on my overall mental and physical health. How can I convey to the court the measure by which I weigh myself against others? To be true, we the people are created as equals. Yet I find no qualification more equalizing than the right to keep and bear arms. This is a right for all, 
not just the sum, not just the few, but the many. This right truly separates the adults from the children. But alas, I am rendered lesser by my own countrymen. <clears throat> Upon which rock do you now base your overbearance? Incompetence held no water. Intent, as expressed before, has ever been naught else but benevolent. Evidence, what does exist, points to my overt effort to protect. And yes, it does. The fact that I didn't know that the firearm was even loaded the fact that all of my arms were in my car in order to protect children who had access to the trailer. In case you were wondering what the evidence was. Is this not the intent of the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution? That the security of a free state is incumbent upon an armed population? that aren't, we are equal. These and more questions degrade my personal mental health. They not my sense of who I am. I identify, call myself, have contractually agreed that I am an American Minuteman, constitutionally obligated to aid in the common defense. <clears throat> if so, however, the court see fit to shew mercy, nay, respect for the sacrifices I have made, then we are still a society of united and constitutionally consenting adults. And I will still willingly stand for you, and if necessary, give my life. I want for a country where my nieces and nephews can live happy childhoods. A country where they can grow up and do their parents, grandparents, and myself proud. The militia is part of that dream. It is, the true, um, it is what true Americans extol, which it means raise above all else and hold as most holy. Angels praise. Now, you may not know this, but good people everywhere also carry upon them the obligation and agreement to be American Minutemen and militia wife. Militia wives, sorry. Apologies. <clears throat> and good men continue. Uh, it's the end of that sentence. Uh, it's honestly, it's what good men continue. Any good man would stand up and do the right thing. The, oh, right. By so little as the strike of your pen, you may do more harm than the man who plotted 9-11-01. I want to let that sink in for a second. You could do more harm to the American society by simply writing down something that you do not believe is correct, right, or proper. than Osama bin Laden did. The day he sent those men to fly planes into the towers. Now, I've already said before that there was a lot of BS there and that it, actually it was the CIA, but I can't prove that. All I've got is what I've seen with my own eyes and been able to discern through scientific method, okay? Yeah, diesel doesn't crack 
concrete, not even cinder blocks, and they're not rated for that kind of heat. Um, anyways, back to... Um, so, by so little as the strike of your pen, you may do more harm than the man who plotted 9-11-01. Or, you can uphold a tradition going back centuries. Now, mind you, this tradition is what has kept our country safe and free. This tradition is what is now causing so much upheaval in our nation because those who would adhere to the Constitution and adhere to that one document which keeps us all liberated are at a direct threat by the very institution to which they are sworn to protect. I'm going to let that sink in for a second. Do you understand what it means? If you do, down in the commentators. Men and women are fighting right now for liberty. You may not know this, but there are men and men in every single state of the Union. Some of them, at this very moment that I record this video, dying at the, other, at the hands of the same people whom we are supposed to be on the same side of. Judge the consequences of your denial as much further reaching than just blame price. But understand something. I will not be the only one to be affected. As you might deduce, I am constantly scant broke or indebted. As such, I cannot provide for the common defense except through my action in situation of most dire need. Being that this, contractual, this is contractually obligatory for every American citizen, it has been therefore evidenced through the state's action, or rather inaction, in my case in particular, but actions against the Constitution, that the state of California does not recognize the Constitution of the United States of America. It is this from which I draw my next conclusion. The state of California condones my death and is willing, although indirectly, to affect that outcome. As my contractual obligation to these United States, its Republic, and its war is set in blood upon iron parchment, so too is my resolve to adhere to and curate my duties accordingly. I have always stood for peace, liberty, and the personal pursuit of happiness. To take this last part of who I am and destroy it would be a mistake. I don't need to tell you why it would be a mistake, you know. Nonetheless, it would be a tragic waste of a good man. And a good man is a terrible thing to waste. A minute man who would defend you against his own mother, if needs be, is a wasteful nation's downfall. So, for the sake of all, and the sanity of myself, do what is right, 
and absolve me of these crimes or expunge them from record. As is only appropriate. Allow me my life back. I have always and will always fight to protect yours. Please, show me that same courtesy. Now I have to say, because I have a little bit of time left, that even if the state decides that yours truly will be continuously a felon for the rest of his life, I still adhere to that finalized document over 243 years old, respective to the United States Union of Consenting Adult Citizens. The ability and the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It shall be the duty of the militia, definition of the militia being the people so armed willing and capable to affect the common defense whether through action, deed, or monetary effort. And it shall be the sole effort of the American militia to keep the security within our free state. Which means that the laws are actually supposed to be carried out by Minutemen. We're the ones supposed to be doing the law enforcement, or rather lack of. In case you were wondering, that's why Minutemen don't enforce the law. It's not that it's illegal for us to enforce the law. It's that we don't want to. Because enforcing the law means that we force somebody to do something they don't want to do. We are peacekeepers first and foremost. We will always fight to protect life. Life. Not law. I don't give a shit about your law. I care about life. And if that means that I have to take life in order to protect life, then so too be it. I find that abhorrent. I hate the idea that I would actually have to do so. It's something I do not feel I can stomach for very long. Long enough to carry out a, a specific mission in order to protect American lives, for sure. But it is not something that I can continuously do without feeling some effect of ill. So, yes, there are times where I have to take a stand back and just say, you know what? I can't do anything. Now, I gave more than you could possibly ever imagine to protect a doctor and individual citizens here in Blythe. Also to protect my family name, but that's bygones. That's not. It wouldn't have really mattered. The man is dead. Okay. The difference is, is that to protect the other people that were involved, I'd do it again in a fucking hot second, and I'd stare down the barrel of that firearm again knowing full well the only thing standing between me and a death that is very horrible is a man keeping his finger off the trigger. And I would do it without a fucking backwards glance. I want you to understand. Nay, I want you to realize that as an American citizen, whether or not you acquiesce to it, you are contractually obligated to provide for the common defense.
Now, you might ask, well, Blaine, if we give you your air guns and your firearms back, would you ever turn those against another human being in anger? My response would have to be, only in the defense of myself or others. If that's too much for you, then every single police officer that is about to go into the academy, no arms. Every single police officer that has come through the academy and come to the other side of it, throw down your weapons right now. Every single person who carries a firearm for any reason, put your guns on the ground right now. Do not pick them back up. You leave them lie. Let them rust. Go ahead. You don't want to fulfill your contract? Fine. You don't have the right. Plain and simple. I've earned my right. Because I adhere to my responsibility. This is simple high school economics. For every right that is enumerated within the Bill of Rights, you have a responsibility that corresponds. It's that simple. You want those rights? Uphold the abilities that correspond. The responsibility, sorry, that correspond with those rights. Make your effort. Make this country back into what it was. Or... Don't complain when they walk over your dead body in order to shoot your children. And in case you're wondering, it's already happened. This is Commodore Price. Out.